That's this exchange. We're going to concentrate on the exchange that happens at the alveoli, those tiny little air sacs in the lungs, and then move on a little bit towards the muscles, although we're mainly concerned with this exchange that happens at the alveoli between oxygen and the carbon dioxide that leaves the body. So as I just said, this oxygen, why is it it enters the bloodstream from the alveoli and why is it that carbon dioxide leaves the bloodstream into the alveoli and then is exhaled? And the principles we need to know are that of diffusion and partial pressure. And then why differences in the content between air and blood mean that diffusion will occur. The process of exchanging gases between the atmosphere and the body's cells is called respiration and involves several events, including breathing. As we zoom into the body, we can observe the respiratory system during gas exchange. Air passes through the alveolar sacs to the alveoli, where gas exchange occurs. In this cutaway view of an alveolar sac and its capillary bed, the process of gas exchange is easily observed. During inspiration, atmosphere air fills the alveoli and gas exchange occurs between the alveolar and capillary epithelia. Oxygen in inspired air is represented as a white gas. Carbon dioxide in expired air is represented as a blue gas. Notice the change in color in the red blood cells during gas exchange. Now let's zoom into a higher magnification view of gas exchange at the respiratory membrane. Red blood cells in the capillary adjacent to the alveolus release carbon dioxide and bind oxygen. Okay, so hopefully that's helped us a little bit with why gaseous exchange occurs. Um, really, a simple question that we might get in the exam are the conditions that exist a gaseous exchange to occur. And if these conditions aren't around, it's not optimal for the exchange to happen. So firstly, we've got a moist semi-permeable membrane and that allows the gas to pass through and in, onto the other side, which we'll talk about in a little while. We've got a larger surface area for this to occur, which obviously makes it more efficient. And then we've got a concentrate, concentration gradient and a sufficient blood supply to carry the oxygen away and this concentration gradient during the process of diffusion is what we're going to concentrate on with our more difficult questions. Okay so if diffusion is going to occur between two solutions it always goes from a high concentration to a low concentration and this concept of high to low is something that you will be uh, putting in any question really to do with diffusion. As an exchange if I just enter our semi-permeable moist membrane, hopefully with a large surface area in here, you'll see that whilst we have a very low concentration in this solution, from this high concentration here, these molecules will want to pass across until an equilibrium is reached. So gases diffuse from high concentration to low concentration, and that's what allows for our diffusion and that diffusion gradient means that it will continue until an equilibrium is reached. So one area of confusion that can come is what partial pressure has to do with this. And the partial pressure of a gas, be it oxygen or CO2, is actually what we refer to when the diffusion gradient is talked about. So if there's a higher partial pressure of oxygen, on one side of the semi-permeable membrane, it will move from the higher concentration to the low concentration, and similarly with the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, because really all partial pressure is, is the pressure of a, that a gas exerts in a mixture of gases. Uh, the reason why equilibrium isn't reached, so there isn't an equilibrium at all, is because we maintain it by breathing, so carbon dioxide leaves and oxygen comes into our lungs and therefore our alveoli, and the cardiac cycle, which just means we pump blood round the body, which means that we bring deoxygenated blood up to the lungs, across the alveoli and the capillaries, and then as it's oxygenated, that carries on round the body to our working muscles.
Respiration serves as a means for the body to exchange gases with the atmosphere via the blood. The partial pressure of oxygen, PO2, in the air in the alveolar spaces in the lungs is greater than the PO2 in the blood, so oxygen diffuses into red blood cells from air in the lungs. Also, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, PCO2, in the air in the lungs is less than the PCO2 in the blood, so carbon dioxide diffuses out from red blood cells and into the air in the lungs. Oxygen-rich blood is carried through pulmonary veins to the heart and then pumped through systemic arteries to the body. The PO2 in the blood is higher than the PO2 in the body tissues, so oxygen diffuses out from red blood cells at the body tissues. Also, the PCO2 in the blood is lower than the PCO2 in the body tissues, so carbon dioxide diffuses into red blood cells there. Oxygen-poor blood is carried through systemic veins back to the heart and is pumped through pulmonary arteries to the lungs, where gas exchange again replenishes the blood with oxygen and removes carbon dioxide. Okay, so hopefully we'll understand a little bit more about partial pressure diffusion and the concentration gradient and why it's maintained. And we've got a past question here, which is highlighted by a diagram. We're in the alveolus and we're in the capillaries. And the question is going to ask you about how oxygen and carbon dioxide move between the two locations. And whilst you're answering that question, you might want to consider these figures and the fact that we spoke about that something moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And here we have the mark scheme for that question, a commonly asked question actually, and that oxygen and carbon dioxide move in between the two locations. And as you look at the mark scheme, just concentrate on the key terms that are coming out throughout, and the fact that we're looking to move from high to low and that those figures that they've given us clearly represent a diffusion gradient. The identification has to be of both gas, uh, gases because the question has asked us for both. And a common problem is that we just talk about one, and particularly the oxygen, because the difference was so great.